Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Phil. This is Samantha. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Who do we have today? We have Manny Pacquiao. I wanted to test her on the name. I know how to say Manny's name, Pacquiao. I, I am I'm familiar. still learning. I am familiar with Manny Pacquiao. Uh, I watched some of his fights when I was growing up. He is a legend, one of the best of all yeah, time. Sounds like he's crazy. Why does he sound like he's crazy, Samantha? Because he's won eight different divisions and it holds 12 world titles. Has held 12. Has held 12 yeah. titles. Not eight currently in this moment. <laughs> different divisions. Champion in eight different divisions is mind-blowing. Yes. For somebody to do that is so remarkable. And, uh, you know, he fought the best of the best. Anybody that came in front of him, he fought them. And, you know, he's we'll see in this video, I'm sure. But, you know, just a very smooth fighter. He looks very crisp, very uh, has a great flow to his rhythm. And I really enjoyed watching him. I didn't watch all his fights. I watched a few. Uh, but uh, we wanted to feature him on the channel because we got some Filipino yeah. music artists. And we do sports and comedy as well. So we got to get a sports figure from the philippines in yes. here and who better than manny pacquiao a legend not just a sports person as well he got into uh, politics too yeah, i think he was a, a senator I, I believe in the philippines so that's cool yeah and he's i think just an absolute star in the philippines so i'm excited to check this one out see some some highlights probably that i've never seen from manny and sam you get to experience manny for the first time yeah i've never seen him before so you know, i'm excited nothing about him right no not really i've heard his i think i've heard his name like in passing and stuff but i never knew any any who's boxer i think that was about it yeah so uh i'm excited to check it out maybe reminisce and sam's gonna get to learn a little bit as yes. always we appreciate the support on the channel and when you like comment and if you haven't subscribed this is your first time we hope that you would join us and uh, be a part of this community that we've built over here and we'd yes. love to have you so you can hit the subscribe button and notification bell all right you guys ready i'm ready i'm gonna assume that you're ready as well let's get check out some mini pacquiao let's do it in boxing looks can be deceiving the misconception of those fighters who have more bite than bark and those who look much less dangerous at the weigh-in than when that first punch hits home. And alongside Ruiz Jr., Golovkin, and many more, very few fit this persona quite like the man who can be considered today's most successful active fighter. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. A relatively small, kind, and humble Filipino fighter whose fight night performances bring much more than meets the eye. Here contrasting the humble and the arrogant, we look at some of Pacquiao's opponents from the past, around the time that he was, arguably, at both his physical and commercial prime, all of which, rightly so, believed that they could beat the eight-weight world champion. I think he has all the tools it takes to beat a guy like Manny Pacquiao. If there's ever a time for Hatton to be able to beat Pacquiao, he'll be in this fight. In the same performances that lead to Manny becoming one of boxing's most respected figures of all time. Please click thumbs up, subscribe, and press the bell button if you're new to the channel as we look at before and after fighting Manny Pacquiao. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. So quickly, I think I remember that he actually fought recently. So I think he retired okay. for a while and then came back okay. and he was older. And everybody was like, why are you coming back for? And then he ended up winning another title. At like an older age and everybody thought he was like toast and he yeah. came back and won damn and they were he was like the underdog i'm not sure you guys can um, that's wild let us know unless they show it in this video first up we go back 11 years to a night billed as the dream match Pacquiao versus De La Hoya. I just have to make sure Pacquiao, when he when he comes in with his uh, explosive style um, and his hard punches, I have to make sure I have my hands up. Even then, Manny was considered the world's number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter. However, many pundits speculated that the size and reach difference was simply too great. My motivation has been his skills. My motivation has been his youth. And whilst there was little, if any, trash talk, 
Huh? He said, and I saw Oscar De La Hoya be completely dismantled. I think this tremendously damages his legacy. I just couldn't pull the trigger. I was gun shy. Were you hurt in that fight? Never. Just emotionally. He has a lot of energy. That was very difficult. We didn't know him to be what he was and what he became after uh, that. Were you shocked in that? I mean, we were shocked. Yes. Well, were you shocked too? I, I was shocked for about two years. <laughs> Next, six months later, a showdown with Britain's beloved brawler, Ricky Hatton. 18 months after the hitman's loss to Mayweather, he'd agreed to jump straight back in at the deep end. And labeling Pacquiao as one-dimensional, he launched a more verbal approach during the build-up. Same move every time. Right hook, roll under. Right hook, roll under. Right hook, spin off. Just give him something to spin off onto. There's ever a time for Hatton to be able to beat Pacquiao, it'll be in this fight. One that a devastating loss that ultimately led to Hatton's retirement. The bad man did win, but I mean, when the punch lands like that so early on and that, you know, a lot of ifs and buts, but that's boxing, one punch, that's all it's in set. Another six months on, and yet another Hall of Fame fighter stepped forward. Miguel Cotto, a Puerto Rican with just one loss to his name at the time. 150% sure. I'm going to beat money. I'm the strongest boxing of us. I'm pretty smart. In a build-up void of arrogance or brashness. Miguel Cotto comes to, to boxing to play the big name. I'm always available. And money is one of the best boxers we have for all time. Early 2010. And this time, it was the turn of Josh Claudi. So I guess... Um, they we're not really seeing any of his actual fighting and they're just talking about the build up hype and you know what was the result after the fact yeah right? how they got humbled yeah basically i mean you don't really probably recognize any of these names i would assume that he's no. fighting they're pretty big names like Dela De La Hoya is now a promoter he was one of the biggest fighters uh, you know at that time Ricky Hatton fought Floyd Mayweather uh, was a huge prospect Miguel Cotto also somebody that was really feared and like thought I mean it was the next big thing and so these people just keep coming up and they're gonna knock off Manny Pacquiao apparently and, and then he keeps just dusting them <laughs> Ghanaian fighter who funnily enough also returned to the ring earlier this year, now aged 41. I'm happy that he gives me the opportunity because if Manny Pacquiao says he's not going to fight Joshua, it's not going to happen. You see, so the friendship dies when you get to the ring. After the fight, the friendship comes back. I know what, what I'm going to face and I know who I'm going to face. It's not going to be an easy fight for all of us at all. Another matchup which lacked any animosity between two calm, respectful fighters. There's not much better than the moments right before the opening bell of a Manny Pacquiao fight. On the night, however, Pacquiao pulled off a shutout performance, not losing a step. What an amazing combination puncture this man is. I respect him, and he's the best pound for pound fighter. Everybody I fought, I don't think I lost. I lost to Manny Pacquiao. He's very, very fast. Contrastingly, at the back end of the year, Pacquiao's second attempt at negotiations with Mayweather had broken down. Cue the arrival of a much less humble and popular opponent, the infamous Antonio Margarito. Oh, it's puto Pacquiao. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to beat him. Fred Roach is scared right now. Fred Roach is scared that, that, uh, that, that we're gonna beat Manny Pacquiao. Somewhat of a bittersweet victory for the smaller and more humble man. He might be able to pull off what would be a spectacular stoppage early here. He's really piling it on right here in this fourth round. Manny mauled the Mexican fighter over 12 rounds. And there truly couldn't have been a more fitting occasion for Pacquiao, now the octuple champion, to reach boxing's greatest accolade. We knew Manny was very fast. And we were going good until I got cut. And then that's when the problems started coming. <laughs> Next, 11 months after Manny's... Yeah, it was the cut, bro. <laughs> this guy's just talking all the trash and then... Yeah, he destroyed. got slapped up, too. Like, his face was swollen. Yeah, he looked like he couldn't even open his eyeballs. Like, yeah. 
No, that's crazy. And uh, the thing about Manny too, we haven't even mentioned, and they have they said it a couple of times. He's a super, super humble guy. Like, yeah, seems to be that way. Very religious. He never talked smack about anybody. He was always, you know, like, oh, I'm just gonna go out there and do my best, and never was like, I am the best. He just always was, you know, I do this for the people. I do this for God. I like just a great, great character as well as you know being so dominant. And like they just said, eight division at yeah that point. literally wild. so he was moving up in weight and going in different weight classes as this was happening that's crazy like so much so many moving parts yeah and still just dominating everybody yeah. without losing right like yeah you think you need to adjust in a different weight class yeah, or something take time for yeah but you're just like no no i'll just go up and smash this guy and we'll go over here especially and smash when this your guy. body is changing during that too right like your entire fighting like you have to factor that in yeah. with your fighting well especially for somebody like him who relies so much on speed yeah right yeah fair. so but he's not heavier lo- yeah he's not losing that speed as he's going up he's yeah. probably just gaining more power yeah right which is really crazy cool. His knockout loss to Marquez in late 2012, he returned to face Brandon Rios, also trained under Robert Garcia in California. You know what? To me, I think he's scared, and Freddie Roach is scared. I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to cancel the fight saying that I hurt my hand or something just because he's scared. After the first clash of camps in the Margarito fight, it meant that the beef this time around was more about the trainers than the fighters themselves. Yet in the same clinical fashion, Pacquiao proved too fast and too active, putting a second L on Rios's resume. <laughs> Five months in the gym, training, training, training. Back, I look at the 24-7, I look at all the, the shit I was saying. I should never be saying that shit. You know, I fought it, I fought one of the nation. Another year on, and another unbeaten fighter. This time, the smart, fast New York native, Chris Algieri. A win, but by knocking Manny Pacquiao out in China, right next to his hometown. I mean, that's uh, it's hard to say what would happen after that, but that would uh, either way, my career is going to be catapulted into into another stratosphere after this fight. So humble and respectful, he entered the fight with nothing but praise for Pacquiao. And Pacquiao said, "If he doesn't want to punch, I will create an action. If he does punch, I'll count." Stand by Pacquiao, stones out here. Praise that he's continued to preach exponentially throughout the Filipino's ongoing career. He's a savvy veteran with 65 fights, and he, and he knows exactly how his style works. Even to today, six years on, where he expects him to overwhelm Keith Thurman in a couple of weeks' time. Less than three years ago, Jesse Vargas also came in thinking he had the tools to beat a now aging version of Manny. <laughs> Expecting to overwhelm Pacquiao to avenge the losses of Barrera and Morales, putting himself as top ranks hottest asset. Now it's my time. You know, I planned this as a kid. I said I wanted to take him out, and now I get the opportunity to do so, and I will. After beating Manny Pacquiao on November 5th, I will be the their top dog, their top guy. You know, I mean, they're going to push me from then on. Following the pattern, Vargas believed his speed and size would be too much, though just like the rest, Pacquiao dropped him in the second. <laughs> to win comfortably across all three scorecards. And no, WBO Wilderweight Champion of the World! I tried my best, you know, I, I promised to come back stronger and I tried looking for the victory, I tried connecting with the big shots. I mean, you, I threw more punches than Manny, so I was looking for the win. And whilst most believe that yet another unfair decision loss was the end of the road for Manny, It instead sparked the desire for one last rise to the top. And that rise started with arguably the biggest contrast of the lot. I mean, up if y'all think I'm about to lose the Manny Pacquiao, man. I'm about to beat his motherfucking ass on God now. The habitually loud and outspoken trash talker from Cincinnati, Adrian the Problem Broner. Like, but he ain't, he, ain't fight, he ain't fighting Floyd. Absolutely, man, that's just He fight me. But do you think... I'm to beat your mother... Ask me, worry about Floyd. He think, already beat you, brother. You Despite being unable to put him away, Pacquiao stalked the American right to the final bell. Lighting him up with his head speed, and now Pacquiao loading up Broner in the corner. Though, just like Horn, Broner believed he had won, 
by making Manny miss and hitting him clean. I beat him. Everybody out there know I beat him. Everybody out there know I beat him. It seemed as though you couldn't get it close like, enough. It already sounded like it was against me. So I already ain't, I already, I already ain't got a fair shake talking to you. The noise from the crowd, however, spoke volumes as onlookers saw a very different fight. I thank the whole hood who came out here. I love y'all. I did this for the hood. Y'all know I beat that boy. Whilst the majority now stand in awe of Pacquiao's ability to fight so competitively into his later years, none are more understanding of just how capable the Filipino is than those who witnessed his scintillating best. And at a time when every fight is make or break, Manny now prepares for another brash, confident American. Keith one time Thurman does not just beat Manny Pacquiao, does knock out Manny Pacquiao. Hoping to put another incredible tally on a truly remarkable career. So I think, I think maybe that's what I was referring to is that he just recently fought and that, I think it was that guy and I think he beat him. Okay, cool. True. So that was like 2019 or something. True. No, no, Broner was 2019. Yeah. So that, I don't know when that fight was, but. And has he fought Mayweather before? Because yes. that other guy mentioned that, but that wasn't in here. Yes, they fought. Uh, but they were both pretty old at that point. Okay. Not in their primes, quote yeah, unquote. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of a lackluster fight too. Um, it went the full distance. I don't think anybody got knocked out or anything like True. that or knocked down. Uh, and it, I think I watched that fight because there was so much hype. On it. They were trying to build it up for like years and years and years. Yeah, I think they said in there a couple of times that they tried and then it fell through. Yeah, and it, like when it came to be, it was... I can't remember. There was a whole bunch of issues with like testing and like gloves or something like that. True. And when they actually came to fight, it was kind of lackluster. Um, I remember watching that fight thinking that man, he didn't look like himself for some reason. Mm. And he didn't like, it could be just Floyd because Floyd is great at defense. So, yeah, fair. Um, you know, they're both great fighters. But yeah, anyways, um, you know, he's clearly just a, a specimen and yeah, a, a little powerhouse. He doesn't look like he's that big of a human. No, uh, you know, weight classes. Right. But, um, just an athlete, pure athlete. You yeah. can just see how quick he is. Right. Like yeah, he's yeah. hitting people with like six, seven, eight punch combos yeah, like, <laughs> and they haven't even like thrown a punch back. Yeah. They're yet. just literally like, eh. yeah. And it's because they were saying, right. He's so fast yeah. that they can't even throw a punch. Yeah. Can't retaliate. Yeah. It's wild. Well, good for him, man. Very impressive. That's crazy. Well, guys, so hopefully you enjoyed our reaction to Manny Pacquiao getting a uh, Filipino boxer on the channel. We've yes. got lots of sports on the channel now. So if you enjoy sports, make sure you hit the subscription button and hit the like and notification bell as well. Thank you so much for joining us for another video. We'll be back soon with another one and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.